Timeline of the New York Times. It's now six days after the events on January 6, 2021. We'll have our one week anniversary of the horrifying, terrible, and tragic events that happened last week. The news media, for the most part, is not being very helpful. They have very silly stories here claiming that Trump told the uh, insurrectionists on Capitol Hill that he loves them. This is by the Rolling Stone magazine. Here's their quote. He released a one minute video in which he said to the insurrectionists, we love you, you're very special. Rolling Stone is editorializing here and claiming Donald Trump loved insurrectionists, which he has never said anywhere. Melania Trump sparks furious backlash with tone deaf and narcissistic statements about the Capitol riots. She's only gonna be first lady for another week or so. Does it really matter that you get in last attacks on Melania Trump, who has been hated by the news media for the crime of being married to Donald Trump? So the New York Times has what I believe to be the definitive timeline on the events of that day. Now before I get to that, I would like to point out something. A man brought a fire extinguisher to Capitol Hill for no purpose other than in the hopes of maiming or killing a police officer with it. That in fact happened. That police officer died and this person, this evil, despicable, horrible person who brought a fire extinguisher to the District of Columbia, this person should be charged, convicted, and receive the death penalty. I want to be absolutely clear about that. So. Let's move on to what I actually wanted to discuss. How a presidential rally turned into a capital rampage. The New York Times timeline by Laura Leatherby, Ariel Ray, Anjali Singh V, Christiane Trebert, Derek Watkins, and Haley Willis, dated January 12, 2021. The New York Times worked very hard on this timeline. In their view, they are conducting the trial of Donald Trump. They are conducting the prosecution of Donald Trump. They are conducting what they believe is the evidence necessary to convict Donald Trump. So let's take a look here. They are very precise on the timeline showing events at the Capitol, people gathering at the Capitol, and people preparing for the Save America rally at which Donald Trump is a featured speaker on January 6th. We've got the timeline here. Donald Trump is speaking to a crowd of people at the opposite end of the National Mall. Now, let's see the New York Times attempt a little trick here. After about 15 minutes into his speech, Mr. Trump tells rally attendees to walk to the Capitol. You have to show strength, he says. Now, this is a little trick by the New York Times. It's false for two reasons. One is, if Donald Trump had truly planned for a group of insurrectionists to storm the Capitol. He wouldn't need to say some kind of code phrase in a public speech. He could have told them the night before, Wahaha, I am Dr. Evil. I am going to order you to attack at this specific time. He would not have needed to give them any kind of code message during the speech. So that's silly. Uh, the other flaw with this is Donald Trump's audience was packed to capacity for this speech. This is an editorial by the New York Times. Donald Trump said he wanted a show of strength to give Mike Pence the support he needed to decertify the election and to give the Republicans in Congress the strength to side with Mike Pence should he vote that way. So at this time, this is before Mike Pence has certified the results of the 2020 presidential election for Joe Biden, which he eventually did. Now let's scroll down here. Well, they report a pipe bomb was discovered at the Republican National Committee building, also at the Democratic National Committee headquarters. Those could have been left by anybody, someone trying to cause mayhem of some kind. Uh, that's not proof of anything. Now here's the key point, and this completely astonished me, as it will astonish you. About 20 minutes before Trump's speech ends, some people in the Capitol crowd harass officers posted at the barricades and start to get physical. 
Others follow suit, violently overwhelming the police and breaching the building's outer perimeter. Donald Trump ended his Save America rally speech by stating that he would walk down Pennsylvania Avenue and he invited the crowd to join him in a peaceful protest. Twenty minutes before Donald Trump said that, people already at the Capitol Hill start to storm the Capitol. This is astonishing. Let's go back to this graphic here. If you are a supporter of Donald Trump, as the New York Times claims, you are part of a cult of personality. For four years, reporters at news outlets such as the New York Times have emphatically stated that Donald Trump's followers are mindless sheep that cannot perform a single thought without the words of their leader. Donald Trump's followers love every word by Donald Trump, they worship every word by Donald Trump, and they can't wait to hear every word by Donald Trump. So, look at the distance involved here. The Trump speech took place at the opposite end of the National Mall. We are expected to believe that ardent supporters of Donald Trump did not have any desire to attend his live rally. They had no desire to hear him speak in front of them. They had no desire to see the president appear before them live and in public. The people storming Capitol Hill had no interest in hearing his speech. But we've been told every day of Trump's presidency that Donald Trump's supporters, MAGA supporters, Trump supporters are a cult of personality and they live to hear every single word of Donald Trump. How could you hear Donald Trump speaking if you're already tearing apart police barriers and assaulting Capitol Police? The people already at the Capitol did not arrive to hear Donald Trump speak. The people already at the Capitol did not arrive with the hopes of seeing Donald Trump in person. These people that were attacking the U.S. Capitol did not do this by Trump's words. These people at the U.S. Capitol were independent and separate from the crowd that had gathered to pack capacity to hear Donald Trump speak live at the Save America rally. The New York Times has just accidentally exonerated President Trump. President Trump did not incite insurrectionists to storm Capitol Hill. And the proof is in their own timeline. Look at this again. Fifteen minutes into the speech, they claim Trump is using some kind of code phrase of you have to show strength. Obviously, the five words you have to show strength are not the same as smash through barriers, beat up Capitol Police, break windows, break doors, and smash your way into the Capitol. 20 minutes before Trump's speech ends, the crowd that is already at Capitol Hill begins to storm the Capitol. Folks, if you love Donald Trump and you want to hear him speak live and you came all the way to Washington, D.C., to hear him speak live, you're not going to be at the opposite end of the National Mall attacking Capitol Police officers when Donald Trump is speaking. The New York Times has exonerated President Donald Trump of inciting a riot, of inciting insurrection, because the proof is in their own timeline. The New York Times has proven that Donald Trump said he was going to lead a peaceful rally and at the time that he s said I'm going to lead a peaceful rally down Pennsylvania Avenue the riot is already 20 minutes in progress at the US Capitol the New York Times has exonerated President Donald Trump of everything that the news media was accusing him of you were so zealous in thinking you had constructed the perfect timeline to convict and crucify Donald Trump. You worked so hard to get this timeline precisely right and you just disproved the entire premise of the entire American news media. People are rioting, smashing barricades, assaulting Capitol Police officers 20 minutes before Donald Trump finishes his speech where he says 
follow me to conduct a peaceful protest at the Capitol. The New York Times has exonerated Donald Trump. Better late than never. <laughs>